Welcome to the last in a series of four videos on doing a systematic review. In this video, we look at the final step in doing your systematic review, which is writing it up. This is very important that you check your project handbook and ask your supervisor's advice to make sure you match the assessment criteria. These are the usual sections you would include. An introduction giving background, aims and objectives and detailing your research question. The methods section would include details of the databases you searched, your search strategy, and those inclusion and exclusion criteria. In the results, you would have a PRISMA diagram and also look to summarize the literature that you've included in a table. Look at other systematic reviews and talk to your supervisor for guidance on writing your discussion and your conclusions. And then finally, you would need a full reference list, which EndNote can produce for you. Check your handbook for which style you should be using for this, but quite frequently it's the Cite Them Right Harvard style or the Vancouver style, which is a numbered style that you may be asked to use. But check your project handbook for that information. You will need to include a Prisma diagram in your results section, and this shows the number of references left at each stage of the screening process. There are templates available from the systematic review guide, but there are two versions of the template. The simple one as shown on the right of the screen and then an enhanced one that you would use if you're adding references by looking at the cited references in the key papers you're finding or maybe if you're looking at grey literature and finding that via Google or Google Scholar. So talk to your supervisor about which version of the template they want you to use. But just to look at the template on the right in a bit more detail, the top row records the number of references you find from searching on databases. And then the number that were removed by deduplication goes in the box on the right. You can ignore or just remove the bit about records marked as ineligible by automation tools because you won't be using those. And I'm not sure what you put in records removed for other reasons. So it's really just the duplicate records removed you need to include in that box. So coming on down to the screening section of this diagram, the record screened is the total number you had in your library after deduplication. Records excluded is the ones that are in your in exclude group. Uh, once you've done that first level of filtering on title and abstract, your reports sort for the retrieval are the ones in your include group at this stage. So those are the ones that you try to get the full text for. Now, hopefully you're able to get hold of most of the full text reports. So the number that you're able to read in full text would go in the reports assessed for eligibility box. But if there were any studies you weren't able to get, you would record the number in the reports not retrieved box on the right of the diagram. And the final two boxes are recording the results of looking at the full text. So the ones that you exclude, you would list in the box on the right and you need to give reasons at this stage. So for instance, if I was only looking for randomized controlled trial studies, if one was not that type of study, I could exclude it. So I, my reason one would be not an RCT and I would record the total number of references I excluded for that reason in the box on the right at the bottom. So you should then be left with a total number of reports. So in this bottom box, there's two sections. The reports of included studies would be the number of references left in your, your final selection group in EndNote. The studies included in review may be the same as the number of reports or might be higher or lower. So you may have an article which describes multiple different studies so the number of reports would be lower than the number of studies and vice versa. You might have several reports or several articles describing one study. So in which case your number of studies would be lower than the number of reports of those studies. So it's slightly difficult to get your head around the difference between those two, but I hope that that makes that clear. But do ask your supervisor which version of the Prisma diagram they want you to use. Also in your results section, you should look to include a table to help you structure your analysis of the studies you have left. 
and the headings that you use on this will vary according to the purpose. So here are a couple of possible examples. So first of all, you need some way of identifying each study. So that would be giving the author names and the year of the study. You might be looking at what methods they used. You might want to pick out the key findings. And then what are the real implications of that study for the review that you're doing? And then the second example brings together authors and year in one column. And then this one was looking at sort of study design, who the target group was, I want to pick out the population size for that study, and then have a summary of findings. So this is really very individual to your review. This is an example of a summary table taken from a published article for a systematic review. And you can see the way they've picked out key bits of information that they wanted to analyze in the results that they'd found. So they've got the study details, which is the authors and the year, and also where that study took place. They've got details of the study design and then the target group. And this study was looking at food literacy. So what sort of measure were they using to judge food literacy and um, the outcome measure as well? And then they've got a key summary of the findings from that paper. So it's just a good way to try and really pick out what's important about each of the studies that you're including in your review. I hope you found this series of videos has given you a good overview of what's involved in doing a systematic review, but there's far more detail in our systematic review guide. The link is shown on the right of the screen here. So use that guide. Also look at your project handbook for details of your assessment and how you should write it up. Clearly your supervisor is a really key person to talk to if you have any questions about doing your review. And your academic liaison librarian will be happy to help you with creating your search strategy, choosing where to search and using EndNote. So please do contact your librarian if you have any questions and good luck with your search and your review.